Good morning and welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. You know, when I think about how long I've done this show and how many people in the history I have had on this very set, or, you know, some of those older sets we used to have, uh, but I am thrilled today that we're going to talk about the Little Rock Nine. And we're going to talk about it with one of the members of the Little Rock Nine. I feel like I need to cheer. Yeah, Minnie Jean. Now, do you hyphenate your name? No. So you go as Minnie Jean Brown and Tricky. Uh, Brown Tricky, but there's no hyphen. No okay. hyphen. Okay, all right. Yeah. Guess you know who's here now. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. I am. Um, you know, there are so many places I could start with you, and I want to talk about what you've been doing in recent times, but I want to take you back to that day, to 1957. You were in high school. So you were how old? You were 15? Um, I was 15, my birthday, the first day, but okay. soon to be 16, right? Now, Immediately to be 16. Before you had to walk through that aisleway with the guards and the screaming and the hatred. Did you know what to expect or what were you anticipating? Uh, there's no possible way that anyone could know what to expect. And um, just one of the things I think that's important is uh, one day it came through the intercom, if you live in the central district and you're interested in going, sign this sheet and mm. give it to your homeroom teacher. So there was a certain frivolity, sort of mm -hmm. silliness, and my friends and I put our names on the list. So I you knew that's a good lesson. You know, it's, a, it's really just that little step sometimes, mm -hmm. that may, and you don't know what's gonna happen. And that's a good way. I mean, I still live that way. Now, did you go home and say, <sighs> oh, mom, by the way, I feel I that did. <laughs> I skipped home and said, oh, I signed up to go to Central. And she swallowed and said, oh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it wasn't possible to anticipate what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. and if we think about Little Rock being at the first, uh, if we'd had Alabama, if there had been other places mm -hmm. where this happened, then there would have been some sense of what might happen. Right. But could not anticipate what happened. Not in a million years, of fantasies, nightmares, any of that. Now, describe for me the night before. The night before, uh, well, actually on Labor Day, um, Orville Faubus, the governor, announced that he was surrounding the school with Arkansas National Guards men, they were, mm -hmm. actually. And he said something like, um, if integration happens, blood will one, run in the streets. Still don't know what's going on, uh, but you know that this whole area is cordoned off and there are troops. Mm -hmm. uh, so guess what? I'm 15. What am I wearing tomorrow? I already knew what I was going to wear. <laughs> is this the right thing? Uh -huh. uh, should uh -huh. I change my shoes? just teen type things and I think I'm, I'm when I think back on that I think that was a really good space to be in a teenage girl mm -hmm. thinking about her first day of school and really not knowing what this crazy governor is doing or having a sense of what's going to happen the next day I think that's kind of great I think it is too because yeah we'll keep going <laughs> so you get to school now, did so, you, how did you get to school? So, um, so, somehow the school board or whoever was in charge, the administration of the white school or the, said they didn't want the black parents to come. Oh, uh, really? On the school ground. Because they thought they would agitate well, or be it's, agitated? Well, it's hard to know. Okay. It's right. hard to know. Um, so I remember that my minister, uh, my mother drove me to a place about a block from the school. Mm -hmm. And my minister said, I'm going with her. And so he and two, two black ministers and two white ministers walked with us to this half block, because obviously 
the plot is thickening and people know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so we walk to the front of the school and the guards are standing around and they'll move aside and allow a white kid to go in. And then when we start to move, they close ranks. Shock, wow. Then the people behind is this mob of screaming, hysterical white people screaming hatred, kill them, go back to Africa, you know. Couldn't even really hear. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a sports event with violence, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, my memories are being really, really scared in a way, or shaking, because mm -hmm. that's, that's how you feel when something like that happens. Uh, but, but when I look at the still photos, I see we're standing there, really kids, and behind us are these grown-ups and people just behaving like monsters. Mm -hmm. So the way that I think about that is they threw away their dignity and it landed on us. Because you can't see how scared we were in the still photos. Absolutely not. Hold that thought. we got to take a commercial break. Okay. Why am I sitting on the edge of my chair? Like, I don't know how this story ends. Okay. But we're going to talk about this <laughs> and a lot more when the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show continues. Don't go away.